What up, Pittsburgh Steel fans? Matty P here with another episode of Steel's Warrant. We are talking the three things that Mason Rudolph brings to the Steelers, especially in this week's matchup against the Seattle Seahawks, uh, assuming that he's going to play over Kenny Pickett, or three things he brings, even if he's got to play off the bench, and three things that also he might bring to the Steelers if they retain him for the season 2024. Now, before I get into it, I just wanted to wish you all, um, I hope you had a Merry Christmas. Um, and This is coming out on your Boxing Day in America. You guys don't really celebrate that. Um, like we do around the world, but I hope you had a Merry Christmas. I'd hope to get you out of the video yesterday, but it's actually, I got food poisoning on Christmas, which kind of sucks, um, but that is what it is. I um, hope you got lots of cool presents. I actually got some cool presents. My wife got me a Steelers touchdown on the um, hat. How cool is that? That's a stitched one, and then I've got a logo one, and I've got a mug. How about that? A Steelers touchdown under mug. When we get um, over 500 subs, maybe you guys will be able to get them too. Um, and we even have a mouse pad. How cool is that? So I'll be using that when I produce and make the shows from now on. If you know that I'm doing a live show, you'll know that I'm using my Steelers touchdown under mouse pad. How cool is that? All right, let's get straight into it. Mason Rudolph, what does he bring to the Steelers offense? Now, I thought it would be cool to compare these two Kenny Pickett and Mitch Trubisky this season. So because that, that way they're playing behind the same offensive line. They're playing with the same weapons of wide receivers. They're playing in the same context. They're playing the same crap Matt Cameron offense that the Steelers are still playing with and still causing them issues. Now, as you see on the screen right now in front of you, um, or if you're listening to audio, obviously I'm going to talk you guys through it. So Mason Rudolph, even obviously he's only really played one game and then he came in for the last couple of minutes against the Colts, but he has the highest percentage completion across all the three guys, 63.3% versus, and it would have been higher um, off the game on the weekend um, against the Bengals. Mr. Risky, 62.6 on the season and Kenny Pickett, 62%. Um, Kenny Pickett's obviously played the most games with 12, Trubisky with five, Mason Rudolph in two. Now, in terms of TDs, um, Mason Rudolph has half of the number of Trubisky and a third of the number of Pickett, um, despite playing fractions less. So actually, if you did a touchdowns per game, Mason Rudolph is up ahead of them. Kenny Pickett's a half. Um, Mitch Trubisky is literally, uh, like I think it's point, point seven eight. Um, and Mason Rudolph is one, but really it should be two because he only played two minutes against the Colts. Um, that, his quarterback rating is a little higher. That's probably no surprise. He's the only one that's got a quarterback rating over 82. Um, Kenny Pickett's got an 81.4. Mitch Trubisky has a 71.9. Mason Rudolph, 117.8. But one of the things that I really want to talk about here is the, the, the three things we're going to talk about are accuracy, moving the chains, and deep balls. So accuracy, obviously, they've got the 63.3% completion rate. That's pretty cool from that perspective in terms of what he brings to the mix. Um, now, when you talk about moving the chains, this is a fun fact. In the first quarter where the Steelers um, had two drives and they scored a bunch of points, obviously, they, they, they had the 86-yard um, touchdown to uh, George Pickens to start the game, first first pass play of the game. Kenny Pick, uh, sorry, Mason Rudolph actually threw his shortest pass was to for 12 yards to Allen Robinson. He threw four passes well, well over that, obviously, with the 86-yarder. Obviously, um, you know, he, the moving of the chains in terms of the way it goes with the air yards too. He actually had the highest air yards um, completed per completion. Now, what that means is that each completion is get the most air yards that are allowed. Now, that's 5.7 for Mason Rudolph in this game. It does factor in the Colts um, as well, where he didn't like the Colts game where, he, you know, it was bad offense. He, he barely got any yardage um, there in those last two minutes. But Trubisky's only 5.3 on the season, and Kenny Pickett's 5.1. So it goes a long way to moving the chains when at per pass you're averaging 5.7. You only need two of those, and obviously, um, in those, across those four downs, and you move the chains. Um, so that was kind of pretty cool. Same with pass um, completed air yards per attempt. It's 3.6 versus 3.3 for Trubisky and 3.1 for Kenny Pickett. So Mason Rudolph is definitely looking to use those wide receivers, those tight ends, those running backs, and actually you know, look for those first downs, which is something that we all hated um, out of the Matt Cameron offense. Going back to accuracy as well, um, you look at bad throws. Mitch Trubisky, 19% of his throws are considered a bad throw according to Pro Football Reference. Kenny Pickett is 18.4%. That's why Kenny Pickett started there. Mason Rudolph, 3.3%. He's six times better than, than Kenny Pickett at this and more than six times better almost, you know, on his way to seven times better than Mitch Trubisky. Huge 
accuracy. We're talking about moving the chains. And so then we'll get to our third thing, which is deep balls, right? Deep balls. Now, obviously, he had the 86-yarder to George Pickens for a touchdown. Then he had the 66-yarder as well to George Pickens. Um, but these deep balls are huge. And it's part of this concept of moving the chains. Um, but the, the deep balls in, in how we threw that. Remember I said the first quarter, four all four completions were over 12 yards. Not only does that move the chains, but that allows you and opens up that deep ball. Um, so that I thought was a really interesting aspect of what Mason Rudolph does compared to other players. Um, and this is nothing that you really see that's that different if you actually look at what he's done over the course of his career. If you look at yards per attempt, he averages 6.4 in his career. Now it's 9.8 this season. His best otherwise was 7.5 uh, 7 in 2020 when he played a little bit. Um, so when he played in, 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 he played in five games there, started one. Um, but what I really like about it too, from a Mason Rudolph perspective, is that he does look for that deep ball, particularly because of the way he played at Oklahoma um, State University, where he played in this air raid offense. He is used to throwing that deep ball, and doesn't he look good doing it? Now, he had the 86 yarder. That was a career long for him, a career for George Pickens. Um, I heard one Steelers beat writer say that it was the longest play in the NFL this season. I would double check that. Um, I, don't know, I haven't had a chance to do that yet. But um, yeah, he had a 76 yarder in 2019 as well. So Mason Rudolph is definitely someone that looks to throw that ball down the field and make, make plays. Now, I showed you before um, the average yards for the air, but the average yards per attempt for him when he throws the football or 11.1 this season. He had 7.4 in 2020 when he played that in you know, a lot of games. Um, when he started eight games in 2019, he had 5.7 there as well. So again, like you look at that, um, you know, in terms of their average adjusted passing yards, it is it is huge from what Mason Rudolph and what he's able to do um, in creating a really f fluid offense that looks to score points. It's pretty cool stuff all in all, really. Um, and so it's, it's, it's quite, I'm quite excited to see what he could do in this Seahawks game because the Steelers do have to win this game. The Steelers need to win this game if they're going to make the playoffs. But, but at the same time, um, Mason Rudolph, as, as he did in this last game, is kind of fighting for what his future looks like. One game is not going to decide whether Mason Rudolph gets to continue his career with the Pittsburgh Steelers or in the NFL. So he needs to back this up again this week if he gets to play. Now, I'll be pretty disappointed. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be straight. If he doesn't get to play, I'll be pretty disappointed because I think he's earned the right um, to play in this game. Now, Kenny Pickett, I do, as we've all talked about the fact this could be a wasted season if you don't know how um, Kenny Pickett you know, if you can't make a determination on Kenny Pickett, but I don't want them to rush him getting him back. And then we see a worse injury. That would be really, really pro problematic for the Steelers. And I think it would be something that a lot of people, there'll be a lot of criticism obviously from the fan base and the coaching staff, but at the same time, like what have you got to gain from it? He's better to come back fresh next year. if That's where it is. Now, a lot also depends when you think about it, like this is what if Mason Rudolph plays against the Seahawks? And he wins the game. Then they go away to Baltimore. Then you bring back Pickett. And I think you've got to take it a game at a time. You've got to judge each game as it comes. So with that respect, I wanted to talk a little bit about how the AFC is sitting as well. So AFC right now, uh, Miami won their game against the Cowboys. That one went down to the wire. So that that's huge in terms of what the, the, the playoff picture looks like right now. Baltimore Ravens are 11 and 3. Cleveland Browns are 10 and 5. Obviously, we're now ahead of the Bengals with our tiebreaker. Now, if we can beat the Baltimore Ravens, that's going to be huge in terms of the division wins for us. We've really kind of got to win that. It's that losing that Browns game is definitely coming back to bite us in the butt. On the AFC South side, there are three teams at 8 and 7, which makes it hard for the Pittsburgh Steelers because really, um, you know, we lost to the Colts, we lost to the Texans, so we don't have tiebreakers over them. Um, so, and, and, and the same with the, the Jags. So that's a real problem for the Steelers in trying to make the playoffs. AFC West, look, Denver Broncos after their, you know, their loss to the Patriots, they're in a, they're in a tough spot. Um, so the Steelers, it, it's going to be really interesting because the Buffalo Bills are probably going to lock up outside Miami. They're probably going to lock that spot. So there's really only two playoff spots left right now. And like, it's, it's going to, it could be the Browns, um, unless the Browns start dropping some games. 
Um, it, it's probably going to be the Browns and one of the AFC South teams um, that takes that. So yeah, the Steelers are going to rue that, that game against the Browns. I feel like that's what's going to cost them in the playoffs. Look at the NFC side of things, just as an update for those who are interested. Um, Dallas Cowboys, Philadelphia Eagles, um, you know, they're, they're up there up the top of the NFC East. You've got Detroit Lions, top of the NFC North. They've got the clear victory now. They'll go on and win that division title. Go them. That's the most wins they've had in, in, in a long time. I think it was 10 and 6 um, that they went in 2010, I think it was, off the top of my head. Um, Buccaneers, about this, uh, you know, that, that, that's that, the NFC South, a bit of a basket case this season. Three teams with a losing record with two games to go. Um, and then obviously you've got the NFC West where there's an 11 3 49ers, an 8 and 7 Rams, and an 8 and 7 Seahawks. So it's a pretty big game for the Seahawks because they would really want to win this one and, leap, and leapfrog the Rams. We beat the Rams, remember, as well. Um, there's a lot of other tiebreaker scenarios that factor into them, particularly because they're in a different conference, but it is interesting. Um, so, yeah, if you look at it right now, the AFC as it's standing is Baltimore, Dolphins. Um, so Baltimore Ravens, Miami Dolphins, Kansas City Chiefs, Jacksonville Jags. Cleveland Browns, Buffalo Bills, Indianapolis Colts. Um, so the Steelers have really got to hope that the Colts and the and the Texans start to lose some games. I think they've got to play each other again off the top of my head. Um, and then you look at the NFC side of things, you've got 49ers, Detroit, Philadelphia, Tampa Bay, Dallas, Los Angeles, and then the Seahawks. The Seahawks are in there right now. So they really, but as I said, they really need to win this game to try and help them leapfrog the Rams because there are four teams sitting at seven and eight right now. So for them to go... You know, if they were eight and eight after this game, depending on what happens in the Vikings and the Falcons and the Packers and for the Saints in this upcoming week, they could fall out of that spot potentially. So it's a really interesting dynamic going on as we close down the end of the season. As I said, that Browns game looked pretty looks pretty costly. You have got to go with the hot hand in Mason Rudolph. Whether Mike Tomlin chooses to do that though remains to be seen. Um, so by the time this show comes out, we may have already had some updates from Mike Tomlin, but I just want to give you three things that Mason Rudolph brings to the offense and a bit of a snapshot of how the Steelers are sitting in the AFC. Hope you had a Merry Christmas. Look forward to talking more Steelers content with you um, throughout the week. And as we head into 2024, as always, go Steelers.